Hello, and welcome to Dickinson's Real Deal. On this show, I help members of the public to get the very best price for their antiques and valuables. They get a choice. Sit down with one of our regular dealers. They're going to offer you a sum of tempting cash on the table today. Three. Do you want me to stop at any time? No. If I don't think that's enough money, I'm going to say, no, risk it. Go to auction. We may just get you a little bit more money there. Sold then at 160. Today the show comes to you from Colville in Leicestershire. There's a terrific turnout of local people. They're here with a lot of anticipation. They want to walk away with either cash in their pocket, maybe gamble, but they want the real deal. Today's crowd is not the only thing to march into the den. An army has invaded Alison Chapman's table. Very interesting, dinky vehicles in quite good condition. It makes for a big capital P for profit if I buy them at the right price. I'd like to get about £150 for them. I just hope that Alison's in a generous mood. Well, she seems very keen, so good luck. So now tell me, are these your toys? No, they're not. They belong to my late husband and they've been in the loft and they've been in boxes in the garage. So I've been waiting for the opportunity for something to come up so that I could sell them. So how so, old was he when he first got them? Do you know that? Probably when he was about 10 or 11. So they're around about 1950s? Something like that. Well, they're in wonderful, wonderful condition, aren't yes, they? Yes, they are. They're brilliant. I've had a good look at them. We've got a little bit of um, paint loss on him, but, I mean, the overall condition of them is brilliant. There's hardly any rust. Um, now, the only drawback with toys is sometimes there can be little nuances, little differences that can make them worth quite a bit. Um, I've had a look. I think these are fairly standard, but nonetheless, they do have quite a good value. Yes. Do you have any idea of their worth? Um, not a real idea, not a real idea. I, I mean, I've sort of like got a price in my head what, you know, I'd like to get for them because uh, I'd like to split the money between my two daughters. OK, right, well, I'll get my money out. Two daughters. How about £50 each? No, I think I'd like a little bit more, please. A little bit more? Well... I'll see what you put down. All right. 110. 120. 60 pounds each. Yeah. I think I'd still like a little bit more, please. Well, Carolyn, I think I'm reaching my limit. Would you like to talk to David? Yes, I would, please. You'd like advice from the maestro? I would, yes, okay. thank 120 you. 120 on the table. Yes. I'll tell you what the experts tell me and the auctioneer. There are three um, valuations here. They range from £100 at the lowest and they go up to £200. The interesting thing with these dinkies, you've heard it said many times before, boxed and mint, very important. You do have the boxes. The items themselves look to be in excellent condition. 120 in fairness, is not a bad offer. No. If you got 150 in the sale room and you took away 15%, but you'd be down to 130, yeah. which is very similar to that. We've got to be, consider you need at least 200 or more to make it worthwhile. And I think you would have a reasonable good chance, but you must make that decision. Thank you. <coughs> That's difficult, isn't it, really? It is, so in other yes, words, my offer's, <laughs> my offer's there, isn't it? It is, yes. What do you feel um, you'd like to do? Would you be prepared to put any more down? I'm eating into profit here, really, and I, when I looked at these, I saw a, a fairly good profit because of the condition of them. Yes. Not a generous profit. No. So I think at 120, I would like to hold at that, please. OK, then, I'll accept your offer. Well done. Pleasure Cheers, to do you business much, with Alison. you. Thank, thank you. you. Lovely lady, lovely goods. Perhaps not such a big profit, but I reckon I'll make a quick profit because of the condition. And it won't be long until we find out whether you're right. 
over to Tony Gearing's table now. Lizette's brought him a pristine piece of gold. I'm looking to get between 300 and 350. Um, I don't think I shall be bartering today. I'm not really a barterer. <laughs> don't worry, Tony doesn't bite. And what have you brought for me today, Lizette? I brought a, a rose gold Albert chain with some sort of fob on the bottom. I'm not sure what that's for. Um, it belonged to my husband's grandfather, and that's as much as I know about it. OK. Nine carat? Yes. Nine carat, rose gold. Um, yeah, it's an Albert for a for yeah. watch. Um, got the little T-bar here, which would have been in the... sort of clipped in the button, and then yeah. the watch would have been here on one end. Yeah. And that would have gone into his waistcoat, of course. Um, one important thing about Albert chains is that when we, when we buy these, we want to know that the links have not been worn. See, the trouble is when you've got a watch that's quite heavy, hanging off gold, which yeah. is a very soft metal, yeah. um, as it swings and moves, it rubs and wears the, the actual chain. So I'm just going to just check the links, mm. if I may. Well, it's not been used for at least 50 years that I know of. <laughs> Every link is hallmark nine carat. Yeah. No, it has hardly been used, hardly at all, I'd say. The little uh, medal here is uh, French. It's WWH on it, which is signed on a lot of um, French sort of uh, medals. Nothing for any honours or anything. But um, So maybe he, he, he met somebody French who gave him that as a, as a gift yeah, or something possibly. at some point in, in, his, in his life. There's no actual assay mark to say when it was actually made, but I think it's sort of around the, around the turn of the century, maybe a little bit earlier. Most people would buy it as scrap, but because it's in such wonderful condition, you know, I don't really want to see this scrap. And I think it should be sold again and being used as a, an Albert. Yeah. If it was big enough, I'd have worn it myself, but it's never been big enough for me. Oh. <laughs> right, let's see if we can do some business. 100. 200, 300, 350, 370. Cash is king. Yes, I know. <laughs> yes, I think that's a very fair offer, and I would like to take it off. Thank you. Oh, very that's much. marvelous. Thank you. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you very much, Tony. You're Thank welcome. You. <laughs> Has Christmas come early for James late? Deborah hopes so. I'm hoping James today, when he's seen my cards, will be prepared to pass a lot of money over to me because they are sentimental value and I'm hoping to get two or three hundred pounds for them. Interesting. Kind of 50, 60 pounds? We'll see. Crikey, Deborah, you've really got your work cut out. So you brought along a huge collection of postcards? Absolutely. Tell me about them. Are they family heirlooms? Yeah, family. Yeah. A member of the family used to collect them. A deceased now, unfortunately, but mm -hmm. yes, she, she had an eye and she bought what she liked. So these were all bought by her, not sent yeah. to her? No. All right, OK, so she was a proper collector. Yeah. So we picked these two out because they're, I think, particularly interesting, kind of three-dimensional ones. Yes. This one I like best of all because it's got an airship in it, which probably means it dates from First World War time, perhaps a bit before bit after. But there seems to be an awful lot of these kind of rather sentimental flowery ones from the, I suppose, teens, early 20s. I noticed there was another one of a, of a couple canoodling in a First World War tank. Yes, yes. That's quite a fun one. <laughs> <laughs> so, any expectations? With them being sentimental value, mm. and as you say, some of them are quite rare, I'm yeah. just hoping to get as much as possible. As much as possible. But you say they've got sentimental value, and yet you're still here trying to get rid of them. Well, rather than sit in a drawer, I could buy something with the money yeah. and wear it as, as a, well, more as a memory. Yeah, quite. I'm just going to quickly look at the front of this album. Well, that's a really rather a good yes. Art Nouveau is it, design, yes, isn't yes. it? That's, that's the she album. was in her 90s, so... The album, in a way, is, is as all, nice as the uh, They all as the fall contents. into the, to that era. Yeah. OK, well, let's put some money on the table and see if we can um, break this feeling of sentiment. <laughs> um, I'd like to offer you 20, 40, 
60 pounds for them. That was very sure. Yes, very sure. Very sure. So is another 20 going to help? Yeah. 80. It's not just the sentimental value. There is some rare ones there. I think you'll be able to do something with them. What do you think, David? 80 to 120 seems to be the estimation from the independent value as an auctioneer. Yeah. I would have said, James, 100 quid they'd be all right at. Mm. I think there's a profit in them at 100 quid. There's a lot of them, and they seem to be kept in particularly good condition, and that's the key to it. Thank you, David. Mm. There we are. <laughs> I better put my hand in my pocket again. Yeah, absolutely. Um, how about 90? Split the difference. If you take that away, put another 20 on. What about if I put another 10 on? Hundred quid. No, I think I'm happy with that. Okay. Thank very you good. very much. Thanks for bringing that up. Thank along. you. Hang on, Deborah. Isn't that only half of what you wanted? I was expecting more, but I was quite happy with what I got, considering if I go to auction I do have to take auction costs into account. For a hundred quid I can't really go wrong. I'm sure there's a profit in them. Anyway, I'll enjoy looking through them for a bit. After the break. Who says size doesn't matter? Well, I'll, I think I'll have a little go for, oh, the, for the novelty oh, value. A little go? I want to be a big go. Welcome back to Dickinson's Real Deal. We're seeing some great items coming in, and Barbara knows which dealer she'd like to see for her makeup compact. I think Ian would be a perfect person to show this to because I think it's got the interest involvement for him and I hope he'll pay me good money for it. Hmm, let's see. So what have you brought us today? Well, this is a, um, a novelty uh, powder compact. It's got uh, several little compartments. compartments mm -hmm. And uh, it was found at my mother-in-law's house. My husband seems to recall buying it for a, a long, long time ago when he was very young, which is mm -hmm. about 50 years ago. OK. Um, and I thought it was very interesting. Well, let's hope I find it interesting. <laughs> <laughs> it is a fun thing. It's something different, you know. Yes. Uh, and it isn't made of any precious metal. No. It's base metal, which has been painted to make it look like malachite. Yes, I, dare say. I see. So if we press that, that's the powder that's section. The powder. If we open that, we can see it's got your manicure set, which Correct. is very good. And then I think we pull Ooh. that out. That's your lipstick. And you do your lips? <laughs> yes. Make hot lips, yes. yes. Wow. <laughs> hot lips. <laughs> it's never been used. Um, no, not really. No, I, I really don't know her full history. My mother-in-law didn't talk about it much. We just found it in a house clearance. Because when so, you look at the manicure set, it mm, never it has no, any use. No, it doesn't it's never look. Been used. And the powder comp is still all a reach now. It is, it is. So I imagine yes. quite strange. In terms of money, I just want to make one offer on it. And uh, it's either a yes or a no, I'm afraid. Oh, to you, yes, whether you okay. take my offer or not. Yes, okay. Okay. Um, I would think, to me, it's like 50 pounds, you know, because it's it's not an easy item to sell. No. You know, because unfortunately, you know, the girls of today mm. don't use them. No, it's you know. a it's a novelty, but it's I'm a... sure you'd love to use it yourself. Eh? Would I like to use it myself? Oh, yes. I'd you'd get love my lipstick that, out. You? <laughs> yes, absolutely. I, I think my other half would probably kill me <laughs> <laughs> if I tried to bring that out and sit in my car doing my lips or something. <laughs> <laughs> <Get the lipstick. laughs> I think fifty pounds is a fair offer. Well, I've got my eye on that last fiver there. Ian. You got your so, yes. eye on this one. Yeah, yes. Yeah. So really? If you'd like to put that there, we've probably got a deal. So this will make it a deal. Yes. Sure. Yes. Positive. Positive. Okay. Yes. Here we go. I'm crazy. I must be totally crazy. <laughs> no, you're not. We're going to shake on this. Yes. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you very Thank much. Thank you. Let's glide over to the other side of the den. Gerald's brought Tony some colourful and quirky lantern slides. Really interesting 
set. I think I'll go 60, 70, something like that. I'm hoping to get around about £100 for them. You're going to have to do some work to set Tony alight. How did you come by them? Well, I think there was a parents' house. I can remember them there. And then, of course, when my parents died and we cleared the house, they eventually came to our house. And, and then they were pushed in the bottom of a cupboard. I think they used to put, put in uh, a magic lantern and uh, in the Victorian times, I should imagine. And uh, I've had them about 40 years. But I think it's time for them to go. Right, 40 years. Yeah, you've had a lot of fun with them over the last oh, 40 really, years. Not really, no. no? I, it used to bring them out and show my two sons, but they took no interest in them and off they go into the cupboard again. So, uh, so and the, it, the colours are very vibrant, if you know. Yeah. They are, they yeah, are. They're, yeah. they're um, hand painted on yes, glass. That's it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I've been kindly given this light box so we yeah. can we oh, can see yeah, the that's a good idea. <laughs> isn't it? Just <laughs> I never thought of that. So hopefully we can see the, the vibrancy of the colours yeah. we were talking about. And when yeah. you get them in, in yeah. so, just look yeah. at that. Yes. That's just yeah. So it was painted yesterday, yes. Well, she's hiding yeah. the, the bread, is it, or a cake? Well, she's taking it out, I think. Well, but yeah. anyway, let's have a look at another one. What's this one here? Uh, oh, it's the cat, yeah. Oh, look at it! <laughs> the, the actual bowl is, of milk is yeah. running away, yeah. but the neck's... Yeah. His, uh, his head's off. He's off, yeah. off with his head. All right, let's have a look at this one, shall we? Well, this is a good one, I think. Ah, oh, right, so it's we've got the policeman, policeman chasing someone, obviously, yeah. and the little yeah. dog there. Look at that. Yeah. I'm after you, mate. <laughs> I'm going to have you. <laughs> and of course, of course, you know, these would go in the magic lantern yeah. and mm. be projected yeah. onto the wall, mm. which is why the, the colours are so vibrant, because yeah. so, you're going to lose a little bit, from depending on how far the, the magic lantern is yeah. away, from, away from the wall. Really. No, no, no different to a sort of modern-day projector. Mm. Yeah. Really, is it the, the idea? Well, I'll, I think I'll have a little go for the, for the novelty value. Yeah. A, a little go. I want to be a big go. But what is the difference between big and little in your eyes? Oh, and mine? I shall have to see. Yeah. Twenty. Oh, that's just for that one. If you put one of those side of each one. <laughs> um. Forty. So that's. My fruit and final offer. Oh no, no I want a bit it's more. It's a tenner each. No, no, not more than that. But you're only going to put back in the closet. I know, and for another day, and I for might sell them for a lot more money than that then. I'm going to go one more, 70. No, I want just a bit more than that. That's, 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 that's as far yeah. as I reach. Mm, sorry, sorry. I'm sorry about that, but uh, I would like a little bit more. So it's going to auction? Yes, I think I'll take them to auction. Gerald, I wish you all the luck with yeah. that. And, um, you know, we'll see their eyes in the auction. Yes. <laughs>I think they're going to make 90 odd in auction. They've got to make to reach 70. But you know, I wish Gerald. Like, of course, I you know hope he you know gets a good amount more. How does auctioneer Richard Winterton rate their chances? I think we should be okay uh, on this item. Uh, they're not hugely collectible, but I think we should be okay. Let's get across to the sale room and see if you're right. Yours at 750. You turned down 70. I presume you turned that down because you thought, well, it's worth more. Yes, I thought they're worth a bit more, yes. OK. Yeah. Well, it's coming up now. The estimate is 80 to 100 pounds. The reserve you've set is 90 pounds. Um, Tony's uh, offer of 70 was reasonable, but I think they're worth a little bit more. We go now to lot 95. The collection of the novelty glass slides there, lot 95. Fifty pound a bid, five, sixty, five, seventy, five, at seventy-five I'm bid. At Need a bit more. I'm yeah. bid at seventy-five with me at seventy-five. Seventy-five pound all in. Seventy-five. Top bid, David, at seventy-five pounds. Okay. Would you let it go? Yeah, I'll let you Excuse go. me, sir. If you've got a bid on the book at seventy-five pounds, uh, our seller would would accept that. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. Lot seventy-five. Okay. And we will Could obviously we... he's dropped it low, so we'll look after the commission for him. So, so uh, seventy-five. You'll wipe away his commission, will you, sir? Yeah, two nine two eight. Okay, yep. fine. Well, okay, fine. so the, yes, the auction yes, has been yes, very generous yes. because we were under the ninety pounds reserve. Mm -hmm. He said, No, I won't take my commission from you. He'll take commission from the buyer. You turn down seventy, you've got seventy-five here without any deductions. Happy? Yes, very happy, yes. On the day, that was the real deal. We would have liked more, but we're happy with what we've got. And the fun continues over on James's table.
Colin's got an intriguing secret about this wristwatch. I bought this watch from a charity shop for four pounds. I'll settle for 85, but no less. That would be an amazing profit. Just don't tell James what you paid. Can you tell me about it? Well, I bought it at a charity shop yes. in Melton Mowbray about five years ago. Yeah. Why? Oh, yeah. Omega. Good, good name. Yeah. Good name. That's all. Yeah. But did you buy it to, to use, to wear? I wore it for about a month and got fed up with riding it every day. <laughs> So have you found out anything about it? No. No. I've found, so, in fact, it looks about, I should think, 60s or so something. It looks to me to be 60s, yeah, I agree. It's not a, it's not a silver case or a platinum no, case. No. Steel, in working order, as far as we know. Did you pay a lot for it? No. <laughs> Do you want much for it? As much as possible. As much as possible. I have to say, I think it's a nice-looking watch. I wouldn't mind wearing this. Are you going to go back to the charity shop and give them a donation if I give you a good profit? Uh, very doubtful. <laughs> it's going to be your charity. Okay. The wife's charity. And the, oh, is, is she watching? <laughs> <laughs> right, we'll put some money on the table. Um, 20, 40, 60, 80, 100 pounds. Does that, does that make you tick? Ooh. The name's Bond, <laughs> James Bond. 50s, Amiga, you know who wears one of those, that's the man. That's a stainless steel Amiga, worth 100 to 150 pounds. Mm -hmm. There's 100 pounds on the table. It's about there, I suppose. You might get more at auction, it's a gamble. But it may well be that our dealer's prepared to pay a little bit more. Hopefully. I'll leave it with you. Tick-tock. <laughs> it's a good name. Well, right. I'm going to put down one more note, and then that's going to be my lot. I'll Is offer it? you 110. You're not willing, not willing to go? No, not I think... Not a penny more. Not a penny more. You're quite right. <laughs> I think that's, that's, just, that's where I see it, really. I think, I think what I've paid for it, I think that's a very acceptable price. So you've made a decent profit, have you? Of course. Are you going, going to tell me? Do you want to know? Yes, really? I'd love to know. Four pounds. Four pounds. Congratulations, you're a very good dealer. I wish I was as clever as you. £110 for four pounds. A good, good profit. Thank you. And he was such a nice man, and I'm very glad he made a huge profit. I probably weren't there. Don't be so down on yourself, James. We'll find out what happens later. Also coming up, there's a lot at stake in this deal for Harry. Are you on commission? She getting me a chicken dinner. A chicken dinner. Get your money out, Alison. He's a growing lad. <laughs> <laughs> the people of Colville are still pouring in with exciting goodies. And what Nick's brought in is no exception. Ian's already jumping for joy. A carved three-legged frog in jade. What could be better to bring to me to add to my collection of three-legged frogs? I don't know whether I should say this, but I already paid about a fiver for it. You can tell us, but don't tell Ian. A jade frog. Could you tell us a little bit of what you know about it? Um, I think he's Chinese. Mm -hmm. I bought him at a local market a while ago. I think they're lucky frogs because it's only got three legs. Yes, it's a three-legged yeah. frog, and I don't know whether you've watched the program in the past, but I actually collect them. I might have known <laughs> that you did collect them, yes. Yeah. You heard I collected them. <laughs> Is that the reason you brought it onto the program? Yes. In the hopes that you'd get me? <laughs> yes. Well, it's very cleverly done. It's not an early one. It's no. made to look as though it is an antique one. Yeah. OK? The earlier ones have far more detail. It was completely white, and I rubbed soot into it to bring out the detail on it, because it, it just looked like a, a little white pebble, and you couldn't really tell what it was. Well, you know, it hasn't harmed it in any way. No. You know, because it isn't an antique piece, so it doesn't really right. matter. Uh, so what age do you think it is? Fairly modern. No. You know, you can go to Hong Kong, Singapore, and Bangkok and buy them everywhere. So. I know what it's worth, and I'm going to make you just one single offer. Yeah. Which you probably think, that's a bit mean. 
Yeah. So what I'd like to pay for it is fifty pounds. So fifty pounds on the table, and maybe ask what you might have paid for it. <laughs> I'm being cheeky now. <laughs> He's being cheeky. Well, when this came in today, both the independent valuers and the auctioneer, we all looked at it, and there were split and mixed opinions as to the authenticity and what it was. It was of my opinion when I first saw it, I thought the detail does not stack up, in my opinion, to be something special. Now, Ian sounds like he's sure. He's offering £50. But could it be that Ian <laughs> thinks maybe we've got something here? David, sorry to interrupt. I don't know whether Nick informed you, but the ageing of it and the colour that has gone into it was done by Nick. He, he put... The I put the, the black into it. It's sort <laughs> to bring out the detail. What do you say? Uh, I haven't been made privy <laughs> to this yeah. renovation. That, that's what I thought this, I should tell you. Of this jade. Yeah. OK, <laughs> I'm going to say this to you. <laughs> it is always worth a gamble. If it's cost you a five or a ten or a twenty, does it matter? It's worth a gamble and peace of mind to go to the auction and say, let the auction talk. Let the room tell us. If they bid 20 quid or 10 quid on the day, then you know. <laughs> so, there is absolutely no doubt in my mind that it is a modern piece. OK, so I think the £50 is a very good offer. I think that because you collect them and you're a nice fella, I think you can have it for £50. So you're happy with the 50 Yes. Pounds? Shall we shake on there? Yes. Thank you very much. Nick. Thank you Thank very you. much. So why exactly did you brush soot into the frog, Nick? I just did that for my own personal thing, because I wasn't going to sell it. I just thought, oh, I can't see the detail in it. I didn't think it would cause any problems. <laughs> Obviously it did. <laughs> Moving on sharpish, what had Kath and Harry brought you, Alison? Very, very appealing. Bella Pock, or Art Nouveau as we like to call it, European fruit knife stand, very sexy. We think it's a Polish kind of background. Um, Harry did some research earlier and uh, we'd like to take away about £200. Let's see if Harry's research pays off. So who owns this then? Um, Mummy. I think she does. <laughs> Mummy owns it. Mm -hmm. And you're helping Mummy today, or...? Yeah, I was I, I was trying to earn some money, and then um, <laughs> Mum found that, so I started researching it. I found that it was Polish, and it's a knife stand. And it's silver? And it, Yeah, and it's made of silver. Well, sadly, it isn't silver. It's what uh, is called silver plate, so it's a metal that is plated with silver. Mm -hmm. Um, the handles are mother of pearl. Oh. Originally, these probably would have also been silver plate, but because they've been used, the plate has worn yeah. through to the brass. So they could probably do with replating. But what is so attractive about it is it comes from a period that we call the Belle Epoque which is very big in France, very Art Nouveau. So if you go around um, Paris, you will see the most stupendous entrances to underground stations. And that was the Art Nouveau period, but also it's called the same period on the continent as the Belle Epoque. All that curly whirly stuff. Now the knives are German. Okay and the stand is indeed Polish. How would that be? What you'll find is perhaps one of the better knife manufacturers are German. So they brought in the knives from this German company and then they used the best of their kind for the stand, which indeed captures a moment in time with such elegance and beauty. So do you like it, Harry? Uh, yeah. Or do you like best, Harry, that? I prefer the money. <laughs> so let's work out together, you and I, how much do we think that is worth of this pile? Uh, so I think, I think we should start with one of those, don't you? So 50. 
Mm. Then we've got, that makes £70. Mm. Are you on commission? Uh, what's that? What's that? Kind of. That's, <laughs> that's when you negotiate with your mother a percentage oh. of what she earns. So she's getting me a chicken dinner. A chicken dinner. Your mother's a wise, wise woman, isn't she? Yeah, very. Oh, I'd very like good. to think so. <laughs> we all try to be. So if I put another one of those down, that's £90. I think we'd like a little bit more than that. Well, quite a lot more than that. You're not impressed, are you? <laughs> I'm going to have to work a lot harder, aren't I? Yeah, I think so. So that would make that £110. Mm. £130. £140. Would you go another ten? No. Don't want to be mean, because I rather like you, Harry. <laughs> <laughs> He's all right now, again. Yeah. And what do you think we should do? Um, uh, Would you like to take it to auction? Yeah. Take a little gamble. Would you like to? I'll have to wait, wait for your chicken dinner. <laughs> OK. <laughs> so we're going auction? Yeah. Yes. Sure. Thank you. No, my pleasure, Cathy. Thank you. Well, Mummy, can I give him a five for some sweets? Or whatever you buy with that if, now. If you're happy doing that, that would be lovely. Thank there you. you. Go. What do you there say? You Thank you. And you've got Very a brother much. over there, haven't you? Yeah. There you go. Mine now. I like kids. You said about that. <laughs> you want to know, because we didn't bring the third. <laughs> <laughs> Blimey. I don't think they'll get many sweets for that nowadays, do you? <laughs> Never mind the sweets, there's a chicken dinner riding on this auction. Bought at 270. Now on the dealers day, Harry, you were very lucky. Alison gave you 10 quid for some sweets. Have you gone out and spent it? OK, well, that's what we want to hear. Um, now on the day, you brought along an Art Nouveau knife stand, silver plate, the reserve is 180. Now, what do you think, Harry? Do you think it'll sell? Well, I think it's going to be a close one. I think the offer you turned down wasn't a bad offer. Is it going to make it? Well, let's find out. I'm in at 80, 90. 90 pan against the book, 90. 100 in the room, 110, 20. 110, 120, 130, 140, 150. 150, 150, I'm bid at 150. 150. Reserve is 180. 160 now at 150. All finished? Not sold. OK, it did not sell, Harry. The best bid was with Alison Chapman at 140. You turned that down. Don't be disappointed. I'm sure next time you bring this out, it'll do a lot better. On the day, the real deal was with you, Alison. You were right on the money. Coming up, there's good news for Lewis. You had in mind that you had three gold coins, which were three half sovereigns. Correct. Correct? Yeah. Not correct. You had three coins, which were three full sovereigns. And doesn't James look thrilled? Welcome back to Dickinson's Real Deal. It's the last deal of the day, and Lewis has brought James a family heirloom. Oh, they're one pound pieces that are worth a lot more than one pound. I think they're worth, in the rough estimate of, Four to five hundred. I'm going to pay something over two hundred pounds each. I expect. Wow, this seems really promising. Let's see how this unfolds. You brought your coin collection along today. I have. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about them. It was actually passed down from my dad's granddad. Yeah. And my dad just gave them to me. So you, your family's kept them really as an investment, or were um, you coin collectors? I think it was a coin collectors. Oh, was he? Yes. Yeah, so. yeah. Is this all there is left? Uh, yeah. Or have you got stashes of them? We've got a, we've got a few. We've got a few more. Yeah. 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 And have you have you been selling sovereigns recently? No, no. No. So you don't have any particular expectations? Yes and yes, yes and no. Yes and no. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good answer. Um, so we've got two from the reign of George V. Right. And one Edwardian one. So that's somewhere between nineteen. 102 and 1910. Um, but the thing is about gold coins now that nobody really collects them as you know items of numismatic interest. Their value is purely in their scrap, which I think is a bit sad. But there we are. We're, we're stuck with that. Mm. Are you going to reinvest the money in more coins? 
Um, not quite sure yet. No. Just, it's something not looked into. No. But... Let's see, see how you go. Yeah. Mm. All right. Well, let's put some money down. Um, 20, 40, 60, 80, 100. 20, 40, 60, 80, 2. 20, 40, 60, 83. 20, 40, 60, 80. 400. 420, 440, 460, 480. 500. Getting close? 520, 540, 560. 580, 600. We'll have a break for a minute. <laughs> I just wanted to get in quickly. Now, when you arrived today, the reason I'm rushing across here is you had in mind that you had three gold coins which were three half sovereigns. Correct. Correct? Yeah. Not correct. You had three coins which were three full sovereigns. Those are worth £240 each. We might Please. be able to squeeze our dear James, who is a good pal, for a little bit more. I don't want to squeeze him too hard, but I think if you got 620 quid, you would be leaving him a hundred pounds or somewhere in that region. I'll, right. I'll leave James to you. Thank you. <laughs> I know a hundred pounds sounds a good profit, but by the time Monday comes, it could be going down again. So, 620, have we got a deal? We have. You're happy? Yes. Surprised? Yep. Very good. Thanks Thank for bringing them much. along. Thank you. Lewis did come here, don't forget, expecting that he, to get 400 quid for half sovereign. So he's a very happy bunny. And so he should be. And I'm reasonably happy because I can make a profit. So everyone's happy. Indeed. <laughs> Lewis goes home with more than he was expecting and the most cash of our sellers today. Congratulations. That was easy, wasn't yeah. it? <laughs> nice. <laughs> But have our dealers fared as well as him? Tony hasn't. He bought one thing today, that pretty rose gold chain and fob, and he sold it for £390. But £20 is not to be sniffed at. <laughs> but the rest of our dealers did well by virtually doubling their money. There was James and the £110 watch that Colin got from a charity shop for four quid. He was such a nice man, and I'm very glad he made a huge profit. I probably won't, though. Well, he tried his luck at a market in London and sold it for 130. And the sovereigns we just saw, he didn't do much better on those when he sold them for just £650. So his big hitter was those greeting cards. For 100 quid, I can't really go wrong. I'm sure there's a profit in them. Anyway, I'll enjoy looking through them for a bit. But he didn't have long enough as the collector snapped them up for £175, almost twice what James paid. Alison's one buy of the day was those dinky toys. It makes for a big capital P for profit. And she wasn't wrong. She paid £120 and hit the jackpot by selling them to a German toy collector for £260. And finally, Ian. Remember that compact? your lipstick. And you do your lips. <laughs> yeah. A customer who likes lipstick more than him bought it almost immediately for £90. <laughs> and the frog he was going to keep for himself was the big success of the day. I actually collect them. I might have known <laughs> that you did collect them, yes. Well, an Australian customer wanted a piece of the action and made him a crazy offer, almost four times the £50 he paid for it. By the way, Ian, is it true that you have to kiss a lot of frogs to find your prince? <laughs> We've had a really good day. Bags of atmosphere, lots of people, lots of buying and selling. That's what I always like to see on this programme. Don't forget to join me, David Dickinson, next time for Dickinson's Real Deal. TTFN, ta-ta for now.